There's Chicago PD. There's Chicago Fire. But I'm most concerned with, you guessed it, Chicago Med. Let's get started. Good triage. 45 year old male, left leg amputation. Treatment two, Trey Motorman, GCS3, BP of 90 by Pell. GCS3 is the Glasgow Coma Scale. Three is very bad, you need to be intubated. You're basically in a life or death situation at that moment. He keeps biting down, I can't get the blade in. Look, you bag him, I'll do CPR. If you can't um, insert a tube to help someone breathe, the one thing you can do is you can continue bagging them. That still oxygenates their airway. It's obviously not as ideal as putting an endotracheal tube in, but the most important thing is CPR, chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. Almost there, it's not time yet. <laughs> Never ideal to do chest compressions with one arm like that, but I can understand if he's been doing chest compressions for 15 minutes. It's really tough. It's tiring to do chest compressions. I've done chest compressions for a while, and generally after each round, you have a student or a resident standing behind you ready to jump in and start doing the chest compressions. Because it's all about at least getting two inches of compressions to the chest, which can sometimes break ribs, but it's all about getting them enough time to get to the hospital uh, to hopefully save their life. I got it from here, man. Nope, he's mine. Okay, who the hell is this guy? Says he's a doc. Right, get off the gurney, doc. I'm senior resident in the CR. Yeah, well, I'm your new trauma fellow. Doesn't happen like that. Trauma fellows don't just run in. This guy could be anybody. You need to see some ID. I'm all for the show, trying to set up the stage for this character. But people don't just run into the hospital and say, I'm the doctor now. Get a BP and keep giving him blood. Send a rainbow of tubes and a type and cross. Get his blood gas and get him to the OR. Type and cross, again, you're trying to find out the correct blood type. For now, giving O negative is fine, but you don't want to keep wasting the O negative blood. So you want to do a type and cross. When he says the rainbow of tubes, that's basically tubes that are sent off for a wide array of tests, wide array of tests like uh, CBC, which is a complete blood count, BMP or CMP, which is a metabolic panel, a PTINR, which shows clotting uh, abilities and clotting times. No gag reflex, didn't even need sedation. Not good. We got another problem. This woman's pregnant. What he's doing there with the ultrasound is called a fast scan. It basically allows you to see if there's any internal bleeding going on, especially in the abdomen, because you can lose a lot of blood in the abdomen without even knowing that you're bleeding into the abdomen. But obviously in the situation he's found that this patient is pregnant, which complicates the situation even more. 20 year old male cystic fibrosis complaining of chills, labored breathing, temps 98. Jamie, is that you? Hi Maggie. Back so soon? I missed you guys. Cystic fibrosis is a, it's a deadly illness, unfortunately. And it basically, you build up so much mucus in your airway because uh, you cannot clear the mucus out of your airway as efficiently as someone who is healthy and doesn't have cystic fibrosis. So you get uh, very often uh, lung infections, obstruction in your airway, and most people live somewhere into their 40s or 50s with the illness. And that's pretty much a life expectancy with someone who has cystic fibrosis. Now, Mr. Dilson, I see that you're using inhaled antibiotics, tobramycin, albuterol. <laughs> You wear a vibration jacket at night and you use a humidifier? The vibration jacket actually helps break up some of that mucus and allows it to naturally come out when a patient coughs. Very commonly we use something known as chest physical therapy, which is almost like clapping on the chest to help clear some of the mucus. Parents of young children who have cystic fibrosis are trained in giving their children this procedure. Baby checks out fine. <laughs> Healthy heartbeat, amniotic sac, and placenta are intact. Gina, though, I'm afraid, suffered a traumatic head injury, and so far she's unresponsive. We need to contact her family if you have any information. My husband and I are pretty much her family. She, she's been living with us since before the embryo was implanted. That's such a difficult situation. I mean, to have someone be a surrogate to carry your baby, and then they're living with you, and they're involved in this horrible accident, and they have a traumatic brain injury, where they're being kept alive by machines. That's gonna be a tough decision whether or not to keep her alive using machines so that the baby can continue growing and get to at least to a stage where um, the baby can survive 
uh, on its own following a C-section. Man. Jamie, I've got your test results back. I wish they were a little more encouraging. You're pancytopenic, which means that your cell counts are low. You've got a blood pH of 7.14. When your blood pH is that low, that means you're trapping carbon dioxide within your body uh, and you're having obstruction, which comes from the cystic fibrosis. That's very dangerous because when you go into an acidotic state like that, your enzymes within your body can't function and you can, you can die. I'd like to innovate you, put you to sleep, get you on a ventilator. You're getting fatigued. This would just allow you to rest so that the antibiotics can do their job. I've been intubated eight times. I think I'll skip it. The purpose of intubating someone who uh, has such a strong acidosis is when you put the tube in, it allows the, per uh, the person to not work to breathe so heavy to expel all that carbon dioxide. The machine basically does it for them. And again, it allows them to rest, it allows the antibiotics to do their job, and it improves the pH quicker than the person can do themselves. Very uncomfortable, um, not a lot of patients like it. I've never seen, and again, I'm not a trauma surgeon, I'm not an ER doctor, but I haven't seen options given that, frankly, to patients. If uh, a pH was that low in my hospital, generally we would strongly advise the patient uh, to intubate them. But again, I'm not a super specialized in this field, so I'm just going off uh, based off my own experiences. Sherry? Dr. Halstead? Need to blow down her CO2, take her off the vent and bag her, give her a dose of mannitol, and increase her dopamine drip to 12. Right away. Doctor? Gina's intracranial pressure is rising. What happens after an injury uh, to the brain is just like any part of the body, there exists inflammation, swelling, edema, and the problem with having swelling inside the cranium is that the cranium is a skull. It's meant to keep things from coming in and protect you, but it also crams the brain when there's edema and swelling, and it actually damages the brain further and can be fatal. So you try and control it with medications. You try and give the patient uh, something to reduce the swelling in the brain. There's also some physical things you can do, like elevating the head uh, to hopefully get some of the fluid to come down. But in reality, if the condition gets worse, you need to do the surgery to open a piece of the cranium to allow the brain to swell and not cause increased pressure within the brain. Intubating Jamie is the only hope we have of keeping him alive. What's that gonna give him? A week? 10 days? It could be six months, a year, more. This goes to the heart of the issue of patient autonomy, that they have the right to choose what happens to their body. I don't know how old Jamie is. Once you're at the age of 18 or older, you have the right to turn down medical treatments. You have the right and say that as long as you understand the consequences of what you're doing, you can undergo or um, skip any treatment that you want. Nobody can force treatments upon you. I understand what the ER doctor is doing. I also understand what the psychiatrist is doing. As soon as we hear something, I'll let you know. Rachel? Rachel, can you hear me? What is wrong? What's happening? I can't find a pulse. Oh my God. Well, the medical student is doing the exact right thing. Call the alert, start doing chest compressions right away. You're not compressing the heart, Sarah. You gotta go harder. But, but she's so small, I don't wanna- Harder, do it, let's go. Come on, Sarah, harder. Hold. There we go, back inside is get a BP. What happened? She arrested, we got her back. Can you get an IV? Hand me a drill, get an IO line. An IO line is an interosseous line. In children, sometimes it's difficult to put an IV line. Sometimes they need extra fluids. Uh, what we can do is we can drill a little needle right, it sounds brutal, but it's really not that bad. Uh, drill a little needle directly into the shin bone. And what that allows us to do is to give extra fluids and medications uh, to that area. I just broke a little girl's ribs. Reese, you saved the girl's life. Breaking someone's ribs while doing proper CPR is part of the course, and the CPR actually saved lives. The ribs are an unintended consequence, but they're a side effect of trying to keep the young girl alive. This is Jorge's. Entiendes? Yes. Inside, I found this. Wow. 
Why would you give that to her in this moment? That's so unnecessary. I promise this will not happen in a hospital. What happened with the little girl? She had a cardiac contusion. Bruising caused her to arrest. She's good now but it was a real scare. Sometimes when you have a direct injury to the heart, that can cause a contusion, which is just a bruise. And sometimes that can mess with the electrical activity of your heart and cause it to cause you to have a cardiac arrest, which means that it just stops the cardiac rhythm. Actually, this is a common scenario during baseball games. If someone hits a line drive and it hits someone in the infield directly on the chest, if it hits in a specific time of the electrical rhythm, you can actually stop the heart. Jorge's brain was without oxygen for too long. We have translators in the hospital for moments like this. If you're gonna have a conversation that's about life or death, you need a translator there. Your broken Spanish isn't the right way to communicate with the patient. He's 20 years old. Without new lungs, he will die. Tiene 20 años. Sin pulmones nuevos, morirá. Your fiance. Tu prometido. The man you loved. El hombre que amabas. The man who loved you. El hombre que te amaba. I can save his life. A little unethical here. They're talking about the patient's condition to a non-family member. It's technically breaking information protocol. But I don't think they're gonna get in trouble for this. I think they're doing the right thing. And that's why a lot of rules are open to interpretation. And I think here they're looking out for the best interest of the patient and uh, maybe telling his patient information to somebody else, but in hopes to save his life. So I think legally this isn't right, but I think morally and ethically it's the right move. Going back to the hospital? Yeah. Wouldn't mind being there when he wakes up. Can I come? Sure. I appreciate that the doctors want to spend their off time with the patient, but you know, you gotta recharge your own batteries. You gotta get the seven to nine hours of sleep so you can make the best decisions for your patients the following day. Again, you wanna be empathetic, but you don't wanna burn out either because then your future patients will suffer also. So it's, it's a fine line between being a good empathetic doctor and uh, burning yourself out. This is a good show, quality actors, quality script, good medical info, showed some very unique situations that have inherent drama built into them, but they were realistic. Based off this pilot episode, I'm definitely a fan, so thank you for recommending this. If there's another medical show you wanna do, drop it down below in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell logo to make sure you know every time I'm publishing a new video. As always, stay happy and healthy.